Opening day is tomorrow. So what should you make of the 2024 Washington Nationals? Well, limit your expectations, but not when it comes to individual performances. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Clary. You can catch me over on Twitter at RyanClary11 and as well as the show page at LO underscore Nationals. For our latest Nationals news and notes, make sure to check us out over on Twitter. Later on in today's show, we're going to be getting into the win total for your Washington Nationals as FanDuel, our people over there. With the FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook, they have set the win total for the Nationals at over under 66 and a half. So we're going to get to that question and then, of course, get into what the Nationals record will be. Last year, I was pretty much about a game off from the Nationals. I picked them to have 70 wins and they ended up with 71 in 2023. So we'll discuss that a little later on in the show. And of course, the preseason award show. What is going to happen? Who will be the MVP, the Cy Young, the breakout player? Who will lead the team in home runs and who will lead the team in stolen bases? Those two things, stolen bases, you may know, but you may not know. Home runs, you may know them, but you may not know them at this point. And of course, I don't think I mentioned this, who will be the breakout player for your Washington Nationals? I've got an interesting answer. Who will be that player a little bit later on in the show? But first and foremost, we are going to be getting started with discussing what should you make of the 2024 Washington Nationals? Well, as we said, forget about the wins and losses. Let's hone in on some individual performances, including prospects. But today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED ON for $20 off your first purchase. So let's get started with today's show as. Tomorrow is opening day, everybody. First and foremost, tonight, tonight's episode for opening day will be out at midnight tonight for opening day. It's a four o'clock start Eastern time that you'll be able to watch on Mass and listen to 1067 The Fan, of course, for your daily coverage of that show. So it'll be a ton of fun tomorrow. It's going to be a great day. I did a little bit of a crossover with the Locked On Reds guys, Jeff Carr, Stephen Offenbaker, you will love to see that episode because I don't know if you really are aware. We've got a lot of former Reds in this team. You'll want to hear about them because they had one guy in particular, one former Red, who will be on this starting lineup. They think could kind of recollect his career with the Washington Nationals. We'll see if he can do that, but you'll hear that conversation at midnight on March 28th, the day of opening day. But let's get started here because the Nationals, what do you make of the 2024 Nationals? Let's be honest. You don't really have that many expectations. You don't. The reason why you don't is because this team is not made to win right now. I know Davey Martinez and Mike Rizzo have said, well, now it's about starting to, you certainly want to collect wins and losses. Yeah, that is true. You want to see this team win because ultimately this is a team sport. Baseball is an ultimate team game. It's not really so much about individual performances, you can have a strong starting staff. You can have a strong offense, yet you need all cylinders clicking at once to make a run in the postseason and just to simply have a competitive baseball team. It's 162 games. You need depth. You need all the different things, and that is why baseball is so unique. But let's just kind of get started here. The Nationals, they're not going to win 90 games this year. You and I know that. We've seen this before. You've been through the rebuilding phases with the Washington Nationals before. We are on the up. We have kind of gotten over that hump to where the expectation, maybe next year, you want to see some wins. You want to see the Nationals get over 500. Are they going to be around it this year? Not necessarily. I don't think that should be the case. Really, again, and this is kind of what we have been practicing and preaching here all along over at Locked On Nationals, the wins and the losses this year will not be coming in the wins and loss category. 
it's going to be coming in your young prospect, in your kind of your CJ Abrams, your even Elaine Thomas, who's not really a young guy, but you understand the point. He had a very good year last year and kind of came out of nowhere, if we're being honest. You want to see him take another step up. You want to see Stone Garrett. You want to see Kibet Ruiz, Mackenzie Gore, your all star with Josiah Gray, who will be starting on opening day tomorrow. You want to see all those guys. That is what this season is going to be about. That is why this Nationals team is not built for right now, but it is built for the future. And I think you will be able to see those pieces and kind of all the different, whatever you want to say, all these different prospects will come together and hopefully be the next foundation for your next postseason team. That is what 2024 will be about for this Nationals team. Forget all of the other stuff. Forget trying to pay, chase a postseason spot. It's not going to happen. And if it does, let's just say, out of nowhere, the Nationals are around the trade deadline, they're hovering around 500, and they're two games out of a wild card spot. Do I want them to go for it? Sure. Because I do think winning is important. I think setting that standard, especially when you have a very young core in which this team does, because again, if you look down this roster, you're not going to see that many old guys. You really won't. And of course, yesterday with the news that Trey Lipscomb is not going to be on the major league roster, that's a little bit disappointing to say the least. But again, this was the expectation. If he did not make the opening day roster, which he did not, that's not surprising to us. He was not supposed to be. He's going to start likely in AAA Rochester at this point. I haven't seen anything about that just yet. But going forward with this team, you're going to be counting the chickens in the farm system. You want to see what James Wood does. You want to see how Dylan Cruz develops. And again, he's starting in double A Harrisburg, which should be kind of surprising a little bit to me, in my opinion, because he did struggle there a little last year. I thought he would start in triple A, but still you understand the point. You want to see what these young prospects will do. That is what this season is going to be about. Yet again, you may be tired of it. Sure. You should be. It's, a little bit dreadful when you have to watch a rebuilding team. But what you can do, this is what will make the difference for you. This is what will make watching Nationals games, 162 games a year, fun. You get to see the development in front of your eyes. You get to see C.J. Abrams move from the back end of the lineup to the leadoff spot and then have that crazy run that he had as soon as he got to the leadoff spot. You get to see that. You get to see Mackenzie Gore kind of have that faith in the coaching staff and the coaching staff put the faith back into him and have some good results shown. You get to see Josiah Gray make some mechanic changes and have that awesome first half that he did last year that led him to an all-star nod. You get to see all those things in this rebuild. That is the fun part about baseball. That is the fun part about this 162-game marathon. So going into 2024 again, I'll be a broken record for this. You're not going to be counting wins and losses. If you win more than you lose, awesome. If you lose more than you win, awesome. It does not matter this year. It really does not. It is about the prospects. And also not even to mention, the Nationals, you've got one more chance at this lottery. As we saw last year, the Nats won the lottery. They should have been picking first overall. I believe they have the fifth worst record off the top of my head. Anything can happen with the lottery. That is the good thing about it, and that is also the bad thing about it. The Nationals, they're going to have one more chance at this to get a very high pick, in my opinion, because I don't think their wins and losses is going to be equivalent to maybe the 10th highest team in all of baseball. I think they're probably going to be in the bottom five spectrum yet again. That's probably where we will be. But still, it's still going to be just fine. This is how the rebuild is supposed to go. And I want them to get one last chance at getting another impact prospect through that door. Because imagine this, James Wood, Dylan Cruz, all the big prospects that you have, Kate Cavalli coming up at some point this season to hopefully come back from Tommy John and have a good time. All these different pieces that will be going into the next Nationals Foundation will be on your roster. And of course, just add another top prospect in baseball. And then all of a sudden you go from two heavy hitting blue chip kind of prospects with James Wood and Dylan Cruz. And then you have three. That is what this year will always be about for me in the year 
of 2024. So expectations low, but expectations for individual performances a little bit higher. We want to see jumps from CJ. We want to see jumps from Key Bear. You want to see all the different younger guys who is very important to the foundation of this team take those steps up, and I think you will see that in the year of 2024. Thank you all for making Locked on Nets your first lesson every single day. So we are free and available wherever you get your podcast next preseason award time will be the MVP who will be the Cy Young who will be the breakout player of the year for your Washington Nationals we'll answer all those questions and more after I tell you guys about our good friends over at prize picks and guys football season it may be over but the action on the floor is heating up whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year get on the excitement with prize picks america's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks you can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars with nba nhl and college basketball entries today on prize picks america's number one fantasy sports app guys do you want to play alongside some of the prize picks favorite players like meek mill and sugar sean o'malley you can do that with our friends at prize picks and of course if you're doing that maybe you want to go over on seth curry points and rebords whatever you want to do you can do that with our friends over at prize picks and prize picks even offers Injury insurance that if your injuries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured for basketball games, you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player projection won't count against you and the rest of the entry stays live. So guys, download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that is download the app today. Use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And of course, I'm your host, Ryan Clary. You can catch me over on Twitter at RyanClary11, but hit us up over on YouTube. Search Locked On Nationals. Hit that subscriber button, please, and thank you. So, who's going to be the MVP? Who will be the Cy Young? Who will be the breakout player? Who will lead the team at home runs? Who will lead the team in stolen bases. I don't think many people will be surprised about who will lead the team in stolen bases, but I think some others could throw some people off here. So let's start off with the MVP. C. J. Abrams. Your shortstop, C.J. Abrams, will be the most valuable player of this Washington Nationals team. I'm actually, I'm ready to say this. I am ready to say it. This is something I've kind of been thinking about it's been stewing in my head I've been thinking about it at night think about it when I wake up who's going to be your Nationals all-star I think it's going to be CJ Abrams I truly do I think CJ Abrams takes that next step up this year to where it is safe to say this guy is going to be a star one thing that was so encouraging from what I saw last year beyond the confidence boost that Davey Martinez gave him kind of pulling him aside and saying listen You're going to have to be a leader now. You're going to be a leadoff hitter for this team. We're going to expect some big things from you. Besides that stuff, I think C.J. Abrams, at some point this season, for all the people who say kind of, you know, the debate is right now, is C.J. Abrams a star? I think that gets put to rest. I think C.J. Abrams will solidify him as a star shortstop moving forward. I truly do. Not just defensively in some flashy plays, the ground that he covers over there, the stolen bases. He's going to seal 50 plus bags, in my opinion, this season. And of course, just his hit potential. One thing that really surprised me from CJ Abrams last year was the 18 home runs that he hit. I'm not expecting some big power splurge from him, but I also think that you can say CJ Abrams has some sneaky pop. 18 home runs is not nothing, especially for a 22 year old who, you know, all we've heard is that he doesn't really have that much power. But if you get to Nationals Park early, and you get to see C.J. Abrams hit batting practice, you'll see, oh my God, this guy's putting it in a double deck really in the 200s up there at Nationals Park relatively easily. I think you see a little bit more of that this year. I think C.J. Abrams, if he stays healthy, and if he continues to what he had in this last year, 
could hit 25 home runs this season. That is the kind of projection I think C.J. Abrams should be able to have. I think it's going to be another 2020 C or not another, but I think it will be a 2020 season for C.J. Abrams. And of course, his stolen base threat, if he can get on base at a relatively average clip, you're going to see him seal 50, 60 bags easily, especially in this Red Series, as you'll hear that conversation tomorrow as to why C.J. Abrams scares the locked on Reds host there. So. We'll discuss that on tomorrow's show. But of course, your MVP will be C.J. Abrams, now your Cy Young Award winner. If you're locked on Nationals every day, thank you. Second off, you know where I'm going. Mackenzie Gore. I think Mackenzie Gore is the ace of the staff. If it was up to me, he would be your opening day starter. He's going to be your home opener once you come up for game four next Monday against the Pittsburgh Pirates, a day game over at Nationals Park, you saw what he did yesterday, dominated. This is what you want from Mackenzie Gore. I think this is going to be the year again. You look at him, and you know how we're always talking about, you kind of need that Max Scherzer signing. You kind of need that guy to come in and be the head of the rotation. Yes, we still do necessarily need that. I'm not going to throw out Mackenzie Gore, though. I think the Nationals could, at some point this year, say, We have found our guy. We have found this guy who's going to be the head of the rotation for hopefully years to come. I think Mackenzie Gore is that good. I think he is going to be that guy for this Nationals team to go out there in big games. You're going to discuss him in a year or two from now, and you're going to feel very comfortable with him taking the mound on game five in the NLDS against the Dodgers. You will feel comfortable. That is what this year will be about for me. Looking at C.J. Abrams, Looking at Mackenzie Gore, two of the biggest names in that Juan Soto trade package, and of course, alongside all the others as well. But those are the two big guys on the Major League roster who will be making a difference. I think Mackenzie Gore this year will probably end up around a 3-5, 3-6 ERA. I think he's going to strike out people at a very high, very high clip, maybe 11 strikeouts per nine innings. I think he could be up to that point. We'll just have to see what really happens because, you know, he's still young. He's got to stay healthy because in past he has had some injuries kind of nip him a little bit. Last year he stayed scot-free. The one thing he did have was blister issues, but I don't really necessarily think that's going to be an issue going forward with blisters. But that's my Cy Young player. Who's my breakout player? First baseman, Juan Yepes. Juan's going to be starting down in AAA. It ain't going to be for long. I think Trey Lipscomb at some point early on this season will probably make that, you know, climb up to the majors probably early on. But I think Juan Yepes is going to make it even earlier. Juan Yepes, if you look down at his numbers, excluding last year, Juan Yepes has always been a power first baseman. He kind of fits that mold for someone who could be the Stone Garrett kind of breakout player of 2024. Juan Yepes, listen, he's not a world, he's not, some world-class first baseman. We understand that. But also, Joey Gallo isn't. Joey Gallo is not a world-class first baseman. You know who also isn't a world-class first baseman? Joey Manessis. The two Joeys over there, you kind of know what you're going to get. I think Juan Yepes defensively, he'll be fine. I don't think it's anything to be worried about. But what really kind of drives me with Juan Yepes is his bat. The ability to hit the ball long, and far. Same thing. You understand the point, though. I think Juan Yepes will kind of be that guy this year where he kind of calls up early on, mid-April, maybe, if there's an injury that happens, or maybe someone's struggling, you decide to DFA, whoever it may be. Juan Yepes could be that guy to kind of get up here and hopefully make an impact on the Major League roster, because we've seen it at times, even in the biggest moments with the Cardinals, he hit that one home run against the Philadelphia Phillies back two years ago. Juan Yepes was not someone who was a big prospect for the Cardinals, but still, they relied on him a lot. They put him in big situations. They expected some pretty big things from him as well. But with the Nationals, he's getting a second chance here, and ultimately, he just needs a chance to play every single day. If you see him killing the ball in AAA Rochester, he would not surprise me to be someone who gets to call up real quick. I don't know what the other corresponding roster move will be, but still, you can make a case for Juan Yepes being the comeback player or the breakout player, rather, for this Nationals team. 
And I think that's what's going to happen this year. I think he's going to be a fan favorite. And of course, the Nationals, we'll see what they can do with that. Who will lead the team at home runs real quickly? This is someone where it could be easy to say Joey Gallo. If he plays 162 games, yeah, it'll probably be Joey Gallo. I'm going to go back to the honey hole, though. It's going to be Lane Thomas again. I think Lane Thomas, he was at 28 home runs last year. Could he get to 30? I think he could. I think Lane Thomas will probably hit, I'll say, 30 home runs. This is something to where I have final numbers where I think guys will be. Lane Thomas, I left the home run mark blank because I just don't really know. I don't know what to make of it with Lane Thomas. But when he goes against left-handed pitching, and if he gets a fastball down the middle, he's going to kill the baseball. Lane Thomas, again, was the breakout player of the Nationals last year. Should have been an all-star. In my opinion, should have been a gold glover as well. But we all know how that went. It's a popularity contest for both those things nowadays. It sucks. But Lane Thomas is going to be your guy to kind of, he's not going to be your prototypical power bat. Like, you know, he's not going to be Kyle Schorber in the summer of 2021. But still, Lane Thomas does hit for a little bit of power. You're going to see a little bit more pop this year, in my opinion, with more playing time, more consistent playing time. And listen, Lane Thomas, the pressure is not going to be on him to perform. If he struggles, he struggles. He's still going to be playing every single day because of what he provides defensively. He's not going to be miffed from someone like a Dylan Cruz or James Wood at this point in his career. He's going to get the opportunities to play in the Nationals. They want him to play as well. But as we've kind of seen in years past, outside of last year, he has struggled in the first half. He's got to start quick. And once he does start quick, if you start to see him kind of piling up those home run numbers, people will start to call about Lane Thomas and try to pick him up at the trade deadline. And ultimately, that means good things for the Washington Nationals and what they could do with him moving forward. It kind of expedites all different things of what you could potentially do with the kid down the line. Who will steal the most bases for the Washington Nationals? C.J. Abrams, never look back. Unless Nassim Nunez plays 162 games, which is not looking like the case right now. C.J. Abrams will not have any competition. I think C.J. steals 50-plus bases easily this year. Easily. Yes, you heard that. Easily. 50-plus bases. Easy answer. Easy question. All the above. C.J. Abrams, your superstar breakout, hopefully, of 2024. Thank you all for making Locked On Nets your first listen every single day. Next, let's get into some win total and projections from FanDuel, and where will the Nationals finish? I'll tell you guys after we tell you guys about our friends over at Game Time. And guys, maybe you're going up to Nationals Park on Monday last second. I do not advise it, but if you do, go to our friends over at Game Time because you should never have to worry about buying last second tickets to a sporting event and as well as other things like comedy and theater events. Because game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports events out there. And of course, maybe you're walking to Nationals Park on Half Street. You don't have tickets yet? Check game time because they have last minute tickets, flash deals, and zone deals. And of course, this is a nice little feature as well. You can see your image, your view from your seat just from your phone. And of course, in just two clicks away, that is some of my favorite features with our friends at Game Time. Don't just trust me, trust our friends at Game Time because you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And thank you all for making Locked On Nets your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. The Nationals over under win total over on FanDuel is 66 and a half. We are going the over. The Nationals will go over 66 and a half wins. Last year, they had 71 wins. Now, this is kind of the real question. Will they go over 71 wins? I don't think so. I think FanDuel is right around where the Nationals will be. I don't think they're going to be bad. I don't think they're going to, I mean, 66 and a half wins is not good. It's not a good team. They're not going to be right. We know that. I don't think they'll be a 66 win team, though. 
I don't think they'll be a 51 team. I don't think they'll be in that range. Right now, where I think the Nationals will finish is 69 wins and 93 losses. That is where I see this national team finishing in the year of 2024. I think they take a tiny bit of a step back, but it's not for what you think. It's not because C.J. Abrams didn't develop the way that we think. It's not because we think Mackenzie Gore isn't going to be the guy that a lot of us, including myself, think he could be down the line. I think when you have a young core, like the guys that we've been talking about all offseason long, it's going to take some time to develop. It takes some time to adjust to a major league schedule. You will see that this year, and that is going to be a very tricky, difficult part for this national team moving forward. I don't think it's going to be that hard. I don't think this national team will really go into 2024 considering all things here. The nationals, they're not going to be great, but I do think they kind of take that tad bit of a step back, and it's because of the young foundation that you have. The most kind of afterthought thing ever when it comes to talking about prospects, when it comes to talking about major league baseball players. In college baseball, you play sort of every day, but even then you have a lot more day offs and a lot more travel days than what you do in the pros. Getting used to playing 162 games from April all the way through the end of September into the first day of October, whatever it is this year, it is tough. It is a very difficult process to get used to. Not a lot of baseball players can really just jump into this and say, I'm ready for it. You saw it last year. Dylan Cruz, one of the better hitting prospects we have seen come out of the college part from LSU, one of the best college players ever to come out of college, struggled at the end of last year in AA Harrisburg. I don't think it's because the competition that he was facing. I think it's because playing 162 games every single day, going out there, getting a process, waking up with a headache. How do you deal with the headache now? All these different things, you have to be ready to play six out of the seven days a week, and sometimes even more than that. Sometimes you got to play eight games in seven days. You have to get used to that schedule, and I think that, that adjustment will take some time as we see guys like James Wood, as we see guys like Robert Hassel, Dylan Cruz, C.J. Abrams continues to adjust. As these guys get acclimated to it, that is when you kind of see these growing pains. That is when you see guys go into a little bit of a you know slump. I don't think that's going to hinder the Nationals all too much, but with this young team, with a lot of different young guys, with a lot of different prospects expected to come up at some point this season, you will see some growing pains, and that may kind of require the Nationals to take two losses more this year. They're not going to be worse. They're going to be a lot more exciting to watch this year than what they were last year, especially when you get James Wood and Dylan Cruz and Robert Hassel and all the different prospects into the fold up into the major leagues. That is when it'll be a little bit more fun to watch, but also there will be some growing pains And that is why this Nationals team could take that step back in 2024. But it's just a two-game step back. I still think they hit that over at 66.5. I'm going 69 wins and, of course, 73 or 93 losses, rather. 69 wins, 93 losses. That will be your 2024 Washington Nationals. Thank you all for making Locked On Nats your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And, of course, check us out. Over on YouTube, just search Locked On Nationals there. Opening day is tomorrow. I cannot wait. Stay right here for Locked On Nationals. The opening day podcast will be out tonight at midnight. You enjoy your day. Go Nats. Let's go.